only on this planet for a wee trip. Go and enjoy it. Folks, do you ever feel like rubbish? Do you ever feel you've lost your mojo? Things aren't going quite well. Whenever that happens for me, I think of my late father's words. Folks, believe it or not, I know it's a cliche, but life is really, really short. And those opportunities are there for you to take right now. They don't have to be big. They don't have to be grandiose. They would be something as simple as listening to that wonderful music, or going for a walk in nature, or going for a cup of coffee with a friend. For me, passion, those small joys, lie in location, lies in a sense of belonging. So, I want to explain to you a certain part of the world. Just down and to the right of that picture, there's a small island. On that island, there's three ruined churches dating between the 12th and the 17th centuries. And it's only seven miles away from here. People for hundreds of years took their dead to bury and to worship on that island. It actually gives the community its name, Lachan Island, meaning the island in the lake. And I'm so proud to say that's home. That's where I'm born and reared, and I absolutely adore the place. Now, hopefully you can see that lights me up. The second thing that lights me up is this part of the world. So I'm going to share with you a small prophecy. In down, upon a hill, in one grave, three saints to fill, Patrick, Bridget and Colm Kill. And would you believe we're sitting on the bottom of that very hill? Up there, there's the three patron saints of Ireland. Absolutely incredible. So as you can see, that lights me right up. So, a question I want to pose to you. What's your passions? And is passion simply enough? So the question I want to pose to you, I want you to mull over today. Does passion actually need a purpose? But what is a purpose? A purpose to me is that thing that gets you out of bed in the morning. It's the thing that gives you some sense of direction, some sense of meaning. Again, it doesn't have to be grandiose. It doesn't have to be massive. Despite what social media says, you have to do something groundbreaking to change the world. You don't. What you may have to do is say, tomorrow, I'm going to make somebody else's day better. What a fantastic sense of purpose that is. Now, where does the sweet spot lie? Where does that interaction come? Where, do people, where does that two elements of passion and purpose come together? Sometimes you may never know it even happens. It may come late, but it may also come in the most unexpected of circumstances. Okay, so in this picture, and I just noticed whenever I sent it to Catherine, I've got the greatest farmer's tan you've ever seen in that picture. In that picture, I'm with my late father, Jim, undoubtedly the best person I've ever met. And we're in Rome in 2017, and I'm at absolute rock bottom in my life. Absolute rock bottom, the lowest ebb. I was just come out of a relationship, a bit of a serious breakdown in terms of that relationship, and I didn't know where I was going. I'm an accountant, I'm logical, allegedly. Thought I was under control, thought I was going really well in the corporate world, and I didn't have a clue where I was going. Went through an absolute tumultuous 18 months. They can call it dramatically the dark night of the soul. I was questioning, who is James Perry? What's his purpose? Why am I even on this planet? Can anybody resonate with that? So I had to go and do a few things about it. How did I get from that lowest point in my life to here, standing on the TEDx stage? A few things happened. First thing was that I wanted to get out of my head. So I went to an event, any event, just to go to get out of my head. Networking events, personal development seminars, wonderful things like this. And I surrounded myself with fantastic, purpose-driven people. And that was one of the first things that I'd done. One person who I'd never met before, after about 10 minutes of a conversation, said, James, there's something special about you. You have to go and do something. I didn't know what that something was. The second thing that I'd done was I actually went and done courses, went and done other things. I actually done a six month course on the chakra system. 15 ladies and James. <laughs> I was in my element. I even met one of the ladies I even started an interior design business with, and that didn't go well. 
but I failed forward, I failed fast and learnt and experimented yet again. So folks, if you're interested in something, go and volunteer in that area. Go and do that course you've always wanted to do, where passion and purpose for you may just be at your fingertips. And the final thing that I'd done, and this was the most difficult, particularly as a man, was I looked right inside, you know, to try and own your emotions, that stuff that men doesn't really, doesn't really do. I tried to do that, but I had to do that. And I came across my values and what I was really meant, what things really meant to me. Empathy, sense of belonging, knowledge and growth, and to have a bit of fun in nearly under every interaction I'd done. I then looked back into my past, well, James, where did they interact? Where did they come from? And I realized throughout my professional life, coaching and mentoring of young accountants, I really enjoyed it. Whenever they come up to me with a question, there was that light bulb moment, that really, that's where I got my satisfaction. The seed was sown. However, circumstances happened that made that seed really germinate, really start to grow. Unfortunately, in 2017, my dad sat me down and went, son, I've got something to tell you. I have stage four cancer in two places. And that was the watershed moment. The very next day, I went into my work and I handed him my notice. And I became my dad's full-time carer for four and a half years. Possibly one of the greatest things I've ever done. My dad was a character and we had, some, we had a hell of a laugh for four and a half years. But there had to be something else. I went from an income down to almost zero. Curse allowance didn't really cut it. So, a few months later, I woke up in the middle of the night with an idea. James, do you know that coaching and mentoring malarkey? Why not turn that into a business? And lo and behold, six years later, I've coached hundreds of people around the world. Absolutely incredible. <coughs> and the big thing is the satisfaction that I get whenever someone who has maybe failed their final accounting exam three times, and I talk to them for a bit, and they get a world-class professional qualification in return. That's a huge job satisfaction for me. Now, I didn't think I was doing anything special at all until that same person that I met previously sat me down and went, do you know you're actually changing people's lives? And it struck me. Ordinary people can do extraordinary things. It really hit me. Whenever that marriage of passion and purpose come together, life takes off. Different things can happen. But isn't it funny that that opportunity comes whenever you're sometimes at your lowest point? The good old saying, every cloud has a silver lining, definitely is true. But you need to keep your eye out for those opportunities. Now, what is next for James? Where is it whenever that fusion of, pa of passion and purpose come together? Well, people who know me love or know I love my travel. And I really, really love it. But there's always a purpose to it. There's always a meaning or an end game for me. And there's the eight wonders of the world. The seven new wonders and the original eight, or sorry, the original uh, ancient wonder of the world. And I've been very fortunate, if that will work, that I've been to six. So the purpose in the next 12 months is to see the final two wonders, Chichen Itza and Mexico, and the Great Wall of China. Now, why am I doing this? I'm not ashamed to say it's partly for me. It's going to be a lot to do with me, that sense of achievement. And I don't know anybody else in my personal circle of friends who would have done something like that. But the other byproduct of that is if I can inspire anybody else to go and do something similar to that and achieve in their life, I think that's job done. I think it's a win-win situation. Son, you're on this planet for a wee trip. Go and enjoy it. And the final story I want to share with you, it's a story of a lady who unfortunately was in a comatose state for the last 14 years of her life. She was blind, she was fed through a nasal tube, she couldn't talk and she was, had locked in syndrome. She could only move her eyeballs. I want to introduce that person to you. And that's my mum, Mary Perry. This is definitely not rehearsed. <laughs> the most amazing person I ever met in my life. And as Catherine said, she's no longer with us. She passed away in 2008. Her opportunities were cruelly snatched away from her. So that's why I'm saying, folks, if these opportunities crop up, 
please take them. I had the honor and the privilege, along with my dad, to care for her. And again, whenever those forces of passion and purpose combine, something incredible happens, even more than love. Whenever your mum becomes like your child, something unbelievable happens. I can't express in words how much I adored my mum. I can't physically tell you here today. But what I can say, folks, is if those opportunities come your way, if you can understand what you like and you can marry that with a purpose, your life will change. Son, you're only in this planet for a wee trip. Go and enjoy it. Folks, thanks very much.